Nicholas Gibbs, it's so lovely to see you. How are you doing anyway? I'm I'm always doing good on a green day. <laughs> okay. So have you been um, doing uh, some FSD uh, version 12.3 driving around? I've been doing a lot, a <laughs> lot. A lo I mean, what you think is a lot, add more to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I have found my first edge case today, first this edge. morning. Wow. Yep. So I, I actually just got back from recording it so I could uh, post it and tag everybody in it. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's this new raised median they just put in, you know, this is Florida. So we always have all these, they call it suicide medians. Okay. Some people call it. And that's how it was. But recently they went ahead and put in a raised median. So you can't go there, right? You have to go all the way around, but beta is not recognizing that. Wow. And so it tries to do that unprotected left. Um, so yeah, so that was an interesting one. That was an interesting one. Yeah, change. And yeah, I, I said the other day, and maybe you'll have an opinion on this. I was talking to somebody. It seems to me that at some point, Tesla and or others that are in this business are going to need to go to the cities and to the countries and say, we need you guys to follow a certain set of principles. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're going to make this world change, if we're going to go into this world, which is going to benefit the environment, benefit, blah, 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 blah. If we're going to do this thing, we need you guys to make sure your signage does this. We need to make sure that you don't do this on the curbs, <laughs> that you don't that you don't all of a sudden throw a a a, a raised center divider <laughs> at us without notifying us or something. I mean, some kind of some kind of coordination. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know this isn't a I don't think a difficult problem for them to solve. Um, you know, especially considering all the other things I've seen it be able to solve up to this point. But, and, and I don't think I agree with you, but I don't think it needs to not have that and still work well. Right. Like Elon yes. said, it needs yes. to be able to, to be put anywhere, no matter what the conditions are and figure it out. Right. But with that said, you're right. I mean, a hundred percent, right. Like if the car, if the car is being as safe as possible, like, you know, there's also a responsibility for the government and for, you know, whoever maintains the streets and the roads and the signs and all that to have, to be up to date, to keep things consistent, to not let things drag off, which right. you see a lot. Um, not uh, again, not here in Florida that much. We're blessed with good weather, uh, so you know it, we don't have like earthquakes or winters that are crazy. So our roads stay pretty right. good nonstop. Yeah, yeah. But 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 you're right. We need that. All right. Well, let's take a look at the news. The very first thing on my list is that Stanley's Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas, who is commonly reporting on Tesla, he says we know it's very hard to imagine today but we eventually expect to potentially see a load of new products coming out of Tesla and expect the stock to eventually price this in. Now listen to this part, well ahead of their respective launches. We estimate Tesla's current model lineup leaves over 80% of the US market by segment volume weighted completely unaddressed. So they're saying that the four, five vehicles now only represent 20% of the total market we look forward to a very eventful 20, second half of 2024. So does this suggest he thinks there's going to be reveals in the second half of 2024? That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? It, yeah. it was weird to have that wording. It's, it was almost as if he knows something we don't. Yeah. Possible, right? I mean, you see a lot of these people get like Ron Barron. I guarantee you knows things we don't know. About, <laughs> yeah, I guarantee, right? I guarantee it. <laughs> You know, um, I was watching a, um, a, uh, a uh, interview with, uh, what's his name? Antonio Garcia, I think that's huh? his name. Um, yes. And he, he was talking about how, about, about Optimus. And he's like, trust me, like, I've seen this, like, it's like, it was a big deal. And I'm like, like, these people are like, this is the beauty of YouTube and this day and age is that yeah. we have all these interviews we get to watch. And it's almost like a cheat code. It's like, insider information it's like these are the people that have actually seen it. and now they get to tell us what they've seen and they're telling us ahead of time and it's up to us either just go watch and believe and do with that what we will but but yeah it was just very interesting it's like what what could be coming out you know a van will, will we see the robo taxi will we see the next uh gen vehicle um i don't know what else like I've always I've always felt that the next gen vehicle he you know Elon talks about it being a platform and I've always felt 
that it does need to include a couple of different versions. And one of those, I and I'm not a truck guy, but I've always felt they need that little truck. That you know, that little a small truck is something that's around the world is a big, big deal. And just in the United States, I mean, we have a lot of them here, but not like you know, in Europe or in South America or in, yeah. in China, or Japan, they use a lot of those little trucks. Yeah, yeah, I I, I love like uh, like a little, little Nissan, um, a Nissan Frontier or like a little Tacoma, right? Yeah, th those are those are great. Like just beach trucks, you know, just throw your board out in the back and just go. You don't don't need to do a lot of stuff. Just a weekend truck kind of thing. All right, this one this one is for you. I, I got this one especially for you because you're going to have to explain it to me. This is from Marina Moreno, and she says, Tesla is working on 5G capability for its electric vehicle EV lineup and its humanoid robot Optimus. A recent job posting for a cellular systems integration engineer hints that Tesla is developing a 5G network infrastructure Tesla's job description for the cellular systems integrated engineer states, Tesla seeking a highly motivated cellular systems integrated engineer. Boy, I said that well. For the global IT manufacturing solutions engineering team to deliver a best in class connectivity experience for all Tesla vehicles. And the role involves understanding internal customer requirements, planning and executing test procedures, rolling out ESIM seamlessly and reliably integration, reliable integration into Tesla's private 5G network infrastructure uh why do i care <laughs> what's going on here i just don't even i mean i understand i have 5g in fact we're on 5g right now as we're recording this but i don't really know why i care that optimus and the cars are going to have 5g and it needs to be seamlessly integrated what's going on yeah so so you see uh, i let me just say i don't know what they're doing i don't know exactly what this is um what I would venture to guess is think of your Alexa, if you have one at home or your ring or whatnot, a lot of these devices have this backend lower bandwidth network that they sit on that's private, right? That's how, why you don't ever have to do a firmware update on your Alexa or on your ring or anything like that, right? It's because they'll do on the background, especially security ones. Um, and they leverage that network for that. So it can communicate, but that's like really low bandwidth. Now, that is kind of piggybacking off of your Wi-Fi. Whereas if you think about with the vehicles, well, it's going to be 5G, right? Because it needs that cellular connectivity. So I almost wonder if this is something to do with the interoperability for them to be able to speak with each other, for Tesla to be able to, again, by you know taking a little bit of the bandwidth, taking it back for you know some... Um, telemetry information data but then obviously also so there's a better experience like i almost wonder if they're going to i don't know who they currently have their per, you know provider through mm -hmm. uh, if it's a verizon or at and i mean i don't know maybe they really do have their own um yeah, right. you know cellular network out there that i'm not aware of but it could be that they don't and that is what they want to build out because they see all these connectivity points that they can leverage. Maybe mm. it's to put, you know, a lot of these connectivity points roaming in the vehicle. I don't know. But what I do know is if you have a network like this that you control, there's a lot of very interesting things that you can do, right? You can allow other people to use parts of your network. You can license it out. There's different models you can do. You can um, do kind of a mesh network across, you know, the country, with this where you can start to do interesting things where you, you have coverage across huge surfaces of, uh, of, of cities and rural areas or whatnot. So I don't know what's going on, but I do know that there's a lot of uh, opportunity in this space. Would this also be something where everybody's talked about from the very beginning where the cars could speak to one another mm -hmm. uh, and, and provide information about their location vis-a-vis uh, -vis one another and or lights and or other traffic and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, th think about like, um, imagine a Waze feature with no human input, right? right? The vehicle drives by, hey, there's a police officer there. All right, great. Next one could know that right away because it was able to communicate or, oh, there's an accident here, you know, just, you know, navigate over here instead, right? Yeah. Like all, all those like little things, oh, there's a pothole here, right? I mean, th that kind of, you know, I don't even know what you call that, but that aggregation of information about an area 
very valuable. And we're actually starting to see Tesla roll that out, supposedly, right? Um, you know, traffic cameras, like just, I don't know, it, it goes on, but there's lots of possibility in this space, lots. Okay. So then AJ, who I now quote, I feel like almost every day, because he's putting out such great information on X, AJ did an extensive look at BYD's financials that just came out today. And he uh, found, he felt that it was a little weaker than, well, it was a little weaker than last quarter, but still pretty good. He wasn't very impressed with their 5.1% bottom line, but given their growth rate, they're pretty aggressive. Um, I'm giving them a solid B for that 5% earnings. What did you think? I think with regards to, I think it's good in the short term. Um, and I think BYD will stand the test of time because they're doing a lot of things the right way. Um, what I get really curious about is what are they going to do about autonomy? If there's one thing that you know the past two weeks have shown us is that this is going to happen. It's not, it, you know, before we, we would say it's it's when, not if. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I, I was on a walk yesterday with my wife and I, I was just sitting there just thinking, just pensive. And I said to her, you know, before I would say that, and there's like 10% of me that would be like, ah, but maybe it's a what, but maybe it's an if. Now, it's not, it, it, there's no if about it. There's no if. It, it, is it this year or is it next year? Like, right. that's where I'm at. Like, it's, and I still think it'll be the end of this year. But with BYDs, you know, what are they going to do on that front? Because this is going to happen. This is solvable. And I don't know, it's, it's a big deal. But I also kind of think that they, they may be in talks with Tesla. Um, it seems like there's a good relationship there. Oh, very but good. yeah, but there's no way. I don't know. It, it's just complicated with China, right? It's how do you ensure that you're not going to get your IP stolen or, you know, just something nefarious happen there? Because yeah. this is, this is yeah. the biggest I, you know, Tam that there is right now in existence aside from humanoids. Yes. Yeah. So, so how do you not want a piece of that? And so it still yeah. continues to blow my mind that, that nobody, not one of these guys, not one of the OEMs has yet said I'm partnering with Tesla. Oh, they're pet, they're tet, partner, partnering with uh, NVIDIA. They're partnering with Waymo. They're partnering with, there's that other company. I can't never remember their name. Cruz. No, but the other the the one that is uh, more foundational, uh, they they don't have their own stuff. Mobileye, Mobileye, yes, Mobileye. Um, you know, or we're going to partner with Apple. I mean, all these kinds of things, but but uh, not one yet has stepped up and said, "Okay, we're we're going to have this. We're going to start putting the cameras in now." Listen, Randy, the last two times I've been on here, I've made predictions and they came true uh -oh. one week later or uh -oh. the very next day. Okay. Last time. It was before CP or what was it CPI or the Fed speaking? The Fed speaking. I told you we'd have. I told you we'd have a green day the next day. We had a green day, right? <laughs> right. Nobody would have thought that. Mark my words. This week, automakers were reaching out to Elon. Mark my words. This week, All mark my yes, guarantee right. it. Guarantee it. It, it might have been last night when he's sitting there saying we're going wide. We want everyone. Everyone's being forced okay. to do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. He got phone calls, he got text messages, and I almost guarantee you he will mention that they have started to reach out to him on their earnings call. I can almost guarantee that's going to happen. Yeah, so what, what what you're saying is that the bump this morning of uh, six bucks this morning or whatever it ended up being after it was as high as I think it was 11, uh, that, 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 that wasn't just affecting the street, that there were OEMs all over the country that were paying really close attention to that. To that decision to uh, to go wide with this thing, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and I think um, um, Scott Scott uh, going ballistics um, has the right reason for this. Everybody's okay. sitting there talking about, oh, it's time to um, to scale us out. We want to get more people adopted. We want to get take rate up and all this. That's not why they're doing this. It's not because the financials. They're not trying to do anything with the numbers. They're at a point. Where they're not compute constraint anymore, and they're like, data, give data. me data now. Data. We are ready to crank this wheel. And now our limiting factor 
is that we're not compute constrained. We want to be compute constrained. Yeah, yeah. We need data. We need to get everybody using this at this point. Will the revenue be nice? Will the subscriptions be nice? Yeah, sure it will. But right now, it's about making sure that come 2025, one way or another, we FSD is ready before the robo tax is ready. <laughs> so that's what I think this is about. I think it's a stroke of brilliance because everybody else is crowdsourcing the problems right now and going to feed them in and they're going to be able to crank out and solve these problems. It's it, it, the chess move is just so beautiful. Everybody thinks that he's that Elon's sacrificing his queen right now, but yeah. little do they know that the knight is two moves away from checkmate. <laughs> and for those of you who don't understand it, just send us a comment below. <laughs> We'll spell it out for you. <laughs> yeah. When people talk about Elon being a guy who plays four moves out, I have famously always my entire life complained that I was never able to play more than two moves out. And that's why I was always kind of a B plus chess player. I just, I, I, I was too impatient to take the time to figure it out any further than that. But anyway, I, I appreciate the fact that Elon is a four move out guy. <laughs> yeah. How many how many out do you play? Um, it depends. If we're talking about during the opening, um, I'm pretty, you know, I'm a I'm a pretty standard uh London London okay. system guy. Uh, if we're talking about middle game, maybe maybe two to four, depending on who I'm playing and what's going on, and you know how how many, you know how how far that the Christmas tree effect goes. Uh, but yeah. I wish I was better than what I am, but I love, love chess. <laughs> well, okay. Over on the economic side, the consumer confidence index slipped. This was a surprise today. Everybody was expecting the consumer confidence index to go up. It slipped to 104.7 from a downwardly revised January 104.8, which was originally 106.7. So now they're showing both January and February down. Consumer confidence tends to signal whether the economy is getting better or worse. Duh. Confidence has improved considerably since late last year, thanks to slowing, in, slowing inflation, but it's still well below the pre-pandemic high. Consumers' assessment of the present situation improved in March, but they're still more pessimistic about the future. Economists polled by the Wall Street Journal had forecast the index of register 106.5. A measure that looks at how consumers feel about the economy right now was good rose to 151 compared to 147. The confidence gauge that looked ahead six months, that's the one that dropped to a five month low to 73.8 from 76.3. And the big picture, the economy is fine by both measures, but everybody's worried about, they're beginning to worry about jobs and they're mostly concerned that inflation is not done because they're going to the grocery store and they're going to the gas station and they're buying uh, even durable goods and they're finding, and well, yeah, and, and housing, of course, and all those things are still a big deal. Yeah. Before I, I give you what I thought, I know we're going a little backwards here, but what, what was your th thought on what Jerome Powell had to say with regards to inflation? Like, What, what was your takeaway from that? Yeah, that was interesting because I thought he played it down yeah. even as the biggest number one thing that affects inflation is oil. And oil has gone up 17% since the beginning of the year. And so he's like saying, well, you know, I think we're going to be able to cut rates now because, you know, and I'm thinking, why wouldn't he have? I never mentioned oil. I don't think he mentioned oil in the entire talk. Um, and oil is... Again, the underpinnings of the entire inflationary problem ever. I mean, always. So wh why did I think that we're going to have a green day the very next day? Well, because I've been sitting on this premise that inflation's been dead, that the only thing that's really keeping us with inflation is housing. And to your point, oil. Right. He knows you can't do anything with oil, right? There's going to be conflict. There's going to be embargoes. There's going to be OPEC plus Russia, all this stuff. It's going to happen. Take that out, right? We, we can't do much about that. Plus, we're moving to electric future. Who cares? U.S. is independent. It's all right. Housing. Housing is another one. You're never going to get that down right now with rates up this high. The, right. the delta is no, too and big. And no inventory. And no inventory. And there's not going to no. be. Yeah. 
And in fact, housing prices seem to be going up. Up, oh, so they went funny. up today. They, they, they today's it, earlier report was up six uh, percent year over year. Yeah, exactly. So you're not going to solve housing. You're not going to solve oil. So if you take those out, we are under two percent right now. Yeah, and I, and he knows that. They know that. The only tool they have right now, because they can't raise rate right now, because they will just shoot themselves in the foot with with our debt, and all they can do is use our words. And so what do you see? You see everybody marching out, talking about delayed rate cuts, delayed rate cuts. Um, you know, we, we still see inflation being too high. No, 3% won't be the new normal. Well, it may be the new normal, right? This whole 2%, I think that actually went into effect, what, like 2012 or something? Like, it, it's not like this has been forever, right? This whole idea of 2%. Right. So I, I don't know. I, I so those are the reasons why I thought we we're gonna have a green day because I did not think that Jerome Powell is that naive yeah. right now where we're at. Yeah. And he's right to be patient, I guess, to an extent, but I don't know. It, it, things are very interesting. And I really, I almost don't think there's gonna be a cut anymore this year. Wow. Interesting. There's a few people saying that. Are there? Yeah. Because think about it. it, it we've got a couple meetings left. If inflation stays where it's at, well, it's still high and you're definitely not going to do it during the election during, you know, from call it August, September, October, November. Unless you start definitely in not June. Doing it then. Unless you start in June. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. And then, and then, but, but, but then that's, that's where your thing comes in year over year GDP. Right. So this is where, you know, hopefully nobody's out there with any kind of crazy call options or anything like that. And you're doing everything safe and you know you're good because if you are man make the popcorn this is this is this is history right now is not boring that's for sure no, 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 it's a fact <laughs> well productivity i continue to believe is the big 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 the one that nobody talks about i would say less than 10 percent of economists care anything about uh productivity it's just shocking uh, just a few of a few folks out there and productivity is definitely cranking right now. And I don't see it going anywhere else but up as we get more and more of this, um, you know, LLMs and, and different kinds of things that actually, well, you know, this stuff backwards and forwards and inside out as we get all of this uh, AG stuff or AI stuff going uh, and actually have the applications for it and actually where people can put it to use uh, productivity, I think is going to just continue to be very high. Extremely. Yeah. I mean, while I still say that there's no real application out there, tool, thing to sell other than FSD when it comes to AI, there's no doubt that LLMs, chatbots, whatnot, uh, things like Grammarly, uh, ChatGPT, uh, you know, whatever else, mm -hmm. it's great for efficiency in your writing, uh, coming up with new ideas, for putting out quick marketing things, creating thumbnails, or I mean, like you can go on and on. As far as it being a tool for your current work pro productivity, it's it's mm -hmm. unequivocally benefit. And so, yeah, that's just going to continue. And, and we're going to find new ways to be more productive with it, right? Especially as we start to layer that in with automation, right? You've probably heard a lot of people talk about um, agents, right? So yes. essentially we can hand off to do certain things. You can start to tie them together, right? The, that when people start when you know ideas really start to come to fruition to really get that right oh it's gonna be crazy it's but throw it into call centers right i mean it goes on and on i saw an interesting thing the other day that i hadn't thought of and i'm i, I don't know who is who else may be thinking this way but as a fat guy who owned a factory um <laughs> one of the things that we were always looking for was ways to not get behind on maintenance ways to not have a machine go down uh that you know just had a machine had a part break or whatever else and of course in our cars we we're doing all that okay it's all you know our cars are so wired up that it just tells us on our dashboard oh you got a problem here before before hopefully before it becomes a, a real big problem well atlas the main the main thing that atlas does with that dog with that funny looking dog is go around and read meters. Yep. Well, I'm watching NVIDIA the other day and Jensen's talking about the factory that he's talk, envisioning. Why would you ever have a dog that needed to go around and read meters? All the meters 
<laughs> would be would be talking to the factory, <laughs> if you will. He called it, you know, the factory being a separate entity. Um, and all the meters would be feeding into the central information source. And you would get a light on somebody's, you know, dashboard saying, uh, machine on row 3.6, you need to go over there and uh, give that guy some oil. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird with manufacturing because you have to be, I mean, you, you probably know this better than I do, but you don't want to add in any more costs into your products. And with a lot of these, uh, these meters that, you know, it, let's talk about full circle, talking about, you know, there's lower, like uh, lower WAN, um, you know, bandwidth yeah. ways of, of sending out readings. Um, Right, the more expensive, or you got to put chipsets now into these meters where I can just have a dumb meter that is just based on flow rate that's going through, and I can have someone go by and read it, and you know that costs me half as much. And so, manufacturing, I think, for expensive tech things, mm -hmm. it can work. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to take a while for costs to come down before we start to see it in the you know more mundane type manufacturing. But I'm with you. It almost seems it, it almost seems a little silly, right? And even then, you, you don't even need to have crazy chipsets, right? You can literally just have an Ethernet, you know, you, you can wire everything up. Like it's not you, you could have everything sent to a PLC. That PLC could send back to, you know, some kind of um uh some kind of gateway that could send to a public cloud or to your on-premise environment. Like there's lots of things you could do. It it is interesting, but, but yeah, no, I see your point. It's, so it's interesting. Consumers also expressed some concern about one other thing. They were concerned about the political environment. And so, so now politics is going to be playing into consumers' attitudes about the future. Um, and I think that uh, there's a lot of concern out there. I don't know if you saw today that Robert Kennedy announced his vice presidential a running mate. Uh, she's a 37 year old uh, Japanese, I don't, maybe half Japanese or maybe, maybe full. I'm not sure. Uh, born, born poor in Oakland. And, um, and now she's, uh, you know, some kind of computer genius and uh, uh, cute and, uh, and uh, uh, smart and a lawyer. Huh. One more lawyer, all we need. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the world, but the world this year, certainly, um, I don't think there's as, as much as I know, there's some people that think that, you know, that Trump is the best opportunity we could possibly have for the country at this time. There's a whole bunch of people that think he's, you know, the, the worst thing that could happen to the country. I don't think there's hardly anybody that thinks that Biden is the best thing that could happen. I mean, even the Democrats, I don't think think, oh, man, this guy's the perfect answer. He's the solution. But he's what they got. Um, so I can see where people would be a little nervous. Yeah, it'll. I mean, first, I was really rooting for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> really, I thought that would have been amazing. Of the three um, people he had on his list, I yeah. think the better choice. <laughs> um, I mean, can you just imagine that vice president? Oh, wait, can't do Sunday, got a game to get to. That would be amazing. Nope, can't tackle the quarterback, secret service will get on you. Um, yeah, so. Politics is definitely going to get interesting, right? Because I agree with you. I think half the country, maybe slightly more than half the country at this point, thinks Trump's the best option. Slight, half the country or slightly less than half the country thinks that uh, Trump is the devil. Um, both sides are probably wrong, right? Okay. It's okay. It's... He's, he's definitely probably not the best possible person in this country to lead us. He's also probably not the absolute worst person, um, especially when you see what we have right now. Um, this is where RFK becomes very interesting because he knows that if he runs, I'm sure in his heart of hearts, he feels like he is doing what he's, what's right and that he really thinks he has a shot of winning. The problem is if he, well, as he runs, he's probably going to steal more Biden votes than he will Trump votes. Right. Um, I mean, I've seen some things where people are trying to spin it the other way around. I yesterday's sure. polling, yesterday's polling says he steals from Biden. 
Okay. Okay. Good. So happy to have uh, someone who's up to date on everything here. Um, it it almost seems like uh, what was it R Ralph Nader who uh, yeah. torpedoed? Uh, who was it? Bush. Uh, Bush. 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 Yeah. It almost feels like that all over again. So I don't know. It, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be feisty. It's gonna be like let's see what the conventions look like. Are we going to have debates? Are we not going to have debates? If we do have debates, are they going to invite RFK to it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, uh, I'm kind of of the approach where I think I know who I'm going to vote for, but I'm open-minded up until D-Day, right? I, you know, I want to keep as wide of an aperture open. I want to be as open-minded as possible and see what happens. You know, obviously, if today was the day, you know, I, I think I know what I would do. But you never know. You never know what could happen. You never know who might jump in all of a sudden um, or who might drop out. For all, Biden could drop out and it's just RFK. I mean, yeah, how yeah. wild would that be? That would be insane. <laughs> yeah, I was having a debate with a very liberal uh, friend, associate. I uh, can't call him a friend because I've never met him. I guess, can you have a friend that's only a pe pen pal? Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm having, so. having, having a debate with him today. And I said, look, I'm interested in somebody who is a constitutionalist, who who believes in capitalism, who understands that the number one job of the president of the United States is to protect the population, <laughs> and and that uh, understands the limitations of the of the job too. And uh, he said, "Wow, that's exactly the way I feel." <laughs> And he couldn't be any further away from me politically. And so we, we yeah. have the same the same notion. So even on those four things, I guess you could see them from very different perspectives. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, I think when you look at the our two party system, if you wrote down the values that each side have, they're identical, <laughs> I would say. They're they are identical. Where the rub comes is how we believe to approach those morals, those principles for our country. And that's where we get into disagreement, right? But at the core of it, I would say there's way more that unites us and that we're aligned to. It's just we all think in different approaches and different, you know, philosophies on what, you know, right and wrong looks like in certain elements. So it's, it would, you know, this, this is going to sound awful, but you almost long for the, the, you know, just post 9-11 days where everybody was just so united. <laughs> you were just so, there was just this, this uh, I don't know, this cohesiveness that you felt, the energy, you know, people proud to wave the American flag, people proud to be an American, you know, just, we just came together and, I would love to have a leader that can instill that and bring that a uniter. But sometimes it seems like you have to have tragedy for that to happen, which yeah. is unfortunate. You're, you're, I've, lo I've learned, I've lived long enough to remember how much my dad hated Truman, how much people hated Ike, who was probably the most of uh, what you're talking about. Somebody who would bring people together of any president in my lifetime, how, the 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 albums the humorous albums that came out about the kennedys after he was elected and he's revered as being so great the people that hated ronald reagan and how how can you hate ronald reagan he was the nicest guy ever anyway so it's just like it's it's uh it no there's is a rare moment in the in the in the nature of the american experiment where they come together they certainly barely came together to form the country in the first place <laughs> so it's, yeah it's hard no, but, but 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 that's what makes you know yeah. yeah that that's what made our country so great is that we we work together to come to a union and a set of rules and principles right yep. um you know I, I think people forget that the settlers of our country were escaping tyranny right? Right. right um i yeah i wouldn't say that they're you know slaves per se but they weren't the free, they weren't their own people. And that's what they left and came to build. And right. even with that same morals, those, those same desires, they struggled to agree, exactly. but they managed to, 
And they talk their way through it and they compromise. And, you know, it, it's not to say that we need all Democrats or all Republicans. It's just we need to get back to having conversations, being able to be friends with someone who is not of the same political um, you know, identification that you share and understanding that there's more to it than than red or blue. I can tell you right now that I lived for 50 years in West L.A. as a conservative. If I didn't if I didn't uh, enjoy the company of people that had different positions than I did, I wouldn't have had anybody to talk to. <laughs> yeah, because that's yeah, we, West Los Angeles is about as far from my politics as it can be. <laughs> Listen, yeah, we, I need to wrap this up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's me. It's my fault. We've been just uh, going so long here. We need to talk about what's happening in the market. Tesla is up after hours. Another 0.79. It was up net actually after everything today. It was up five dollars and four cents, and now up seventy nine more cents in the after hours. I think we're going to keep going green tomorrow. I think it's going unless something comes up, you know, something big that gets in the way because you can never predict that. But I think that we'll see a continually drifting up this week. But we might lose it all on Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday's not jobs numbers. What, what's Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday is Tesla numbers. Second. Oh, that's right. Second, Delivery second numbers. Of, second of April. Yeah. Yeah. And then Friday's jobs numbers. <laughs> and Friday's job numbers. Yes. So we'll see what happens with all that. All right. Let's see here. We have got the bonds. Just a second here. I'm trying to get there. The bonds. The tenure is uh, up um, just four tenths of one basis point in the after hours. Sitting under that 4.25, I, I don't know whether anybody else cares. I think 4.25 is the number. It's where they, uh, you know, that's kind of the, the ceiling. And it's staying under that for now at 4.238. I don't know if the rest of them, no, the rest aren't in yet because we're doing this a little early today. Uh, we've got oil at um, down 44 cents, still low, oh, well over 80 on the West Texas Intermediate, 81.18. So this continues. This is the one. This is the one I think we need to watch. The bonds are still important, but I think the oil is really going to be the, the controller right now for the next month or two. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens because um, it seems like the whole world is definitely slowing down. But at the same time, now we're starting to see rate cuts start to come into play. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that gets stimulated. And China is also stimulating right now, so... Yeah. Um, in fact, I saw somebody, uh, one of the one of the guys on X today was pointing out that almost all of the increase in the money supply over the last three months has been from China. The oh. worldwide increase of money supply has been China. <laughs> wow. so, yeah, uh, we've got the dollar continuing to slip a little bit, but it's way up at the top. Gold, which uh, is sitting at oh, it popped back on under twenty two hundred again. So. 21.99 as of right now. So um, copper still over $4, but barely been waiting for it to slide under $4 and maybe continue down. Um, and uh, the Bitcoin down 713, but still over 70,000. Thoughts on any of those before we talk about the equities? Uh, no, Bitcoin's just interesting to watch right now. And I'm really curious to see what it looks like on the quarterly earnings for Tesla. Me too. Curious if they held. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so equities, we've got the futures. The Dow is up 70. The S&P up 7, 75. And the NASDAQ up 23. Break that down into percentages. You got the Dow at up 8. About the same, close, closer, much closer to the same on percentages. 0.18 for the Dow, 0.15 for the S&P, and 0.12 for the NASDAQ. Um, so it looks like, uh, you know, if we can get anything from a from the night before, could be an up morning. Um, I don't know. We have no reports tomorrow. We have one Fed speaker. So tomorrow there's like nothing happening to bring in anything new except for one Fed speaker. Now, one Fed speaker can destroy your day. <laughs> Who's speaking? Oh, I I don't oh, uh, I don't have it handy. It's not Bostic Powell. already spoke. It's not Powell. I can't remember. Well, it's definitely not Powell. Yeah. Well, he's, he, speaks uh, on, he speaks on Friday. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I know that FSD 12.3.2 is supposed to be rolling out soon. Dot two? Yep. This oh. will be on the 2024 branch. So okay. wow. this is needed for everybody to be able to have it. Well, dot, dot one apparently had some really nice responses today. Or was that dot two? Anyway, people are saying that. No, that was dot one. That was dot one. People are saying it cured both the going too slow and the uh, cent lane centering problem. Yeah. 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 That was huge news. <laughs> yeah. The, the going too slow thing. I, I didn't understand that. To, I didn't think it was going too slow. I, I think, uh, I don't know. Always seemed appropriate to me, but. So did you get people, that? Not yet. No. Not okay. yet. All right. It, okay. it we, seems like 20 people got it. <laughs> okay. I don't even have, I don't even have 12.3 yet. So you're way ahead oh. of me. Well, CERN just got it, uh, I think, last night. So, All right. Maybe it'll come. All right. All right. Hey, thank you so much for co-hosting. We had a good news Tuesday. I mean, it was clear. We didn't even have to make it up. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas, for being here on Tuesday nights. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.